Hello, it's Jim Hutchins for the Jerusalem Connection Spot Report for this week. Last week, Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel gave a stirring address in the well of Congress. Uh, it was a joint session of Congress. That's usually what happens uh, when the State of the Union message is given by the President. Well, this is a State of the World address by a world leader. And for the first time, we had a clear statement as to what to expect with regard to a bad deal uh, in terms of a deal with Iran and their nuclear capability. There was a phrase that uh, has caught some attention uh, that uh, in his speech that he gave. I want to just refer to it. He said this. <clears throat> he said, the battle between Iran and ISIS does not turn Iran into a friend of America. Iran and ISIS are competing for the crown of militant Islam. Islam, militant Islam, jihadist Islam, wants to establish a caliphate, and ISIS and Iran are competing as to who will be the caliphate, the caliphate leader, the caliph, if you will. One calls itself the Islamic Republic, the other calls itself the Islamic State. Both want to impose militant Islamic empire first on the region and then on the entire world. They just disagree among themselves who will be the ruler of that empire, who will be the caliph of that empire. In this deadly game of thrones, there's no place for America, no place for Israel, no peace for Christians, Jews, or Muslims who don't share the Islamic med medieval creed, no rights for women, no freedom for anyone. So when it comes to Iran and ISIS, and this is the phrase I want you to notice, the enemy of your enemy is your enemy. To defeat ISIS and let Iran get nuclear weapons would be to win the battle and lose the war. We cannot let this happen. The enemy of your enemy is your enemy. That is to say, with Iran as our enemy, if we support them against ISIS, we are supporting our enemy. If we support ISIS against Iran, we are supporting our enemy. This is an internal Islamic civil war that will continue. So who do we support? I suggest that we don't support either one. That we wait and see who wins, and then we will inevitably have to fight the winner. If that takes place in the next couple of years, that fight will probably begin by a preemptive strike on the part of Israel that takes out their nuclear capability. After the, the elections of uh, 2016, that may be altered. But we need to recognize that Iran poses a threat. And rather than get involved in supporting Iran versus ISIS, I suggest that we support the Christians in Syria, the Kurds in Syria. I suggest that we send in evacuation teams to uh, uh, evacuate these Christian girls that are being held by Boko Haram. We could do things like that. But let us not support Iran or ISIS. And let us not support Iraq. Iraq is owned by Iran. Iran owns Syria. Iran owns Lebanon and Beirut. Those capitals, Damascus, Baghdad. Let's not support them. But let's do support Israel. And I'm suggesting that it will take a preemptive strike, probably on their part, to take out the nuclear capability. But what will happen then is predictable. The focus will be increased on Israel worldwide. The epicenter of that focus will be Jerusalem worldwide. And though uh, the Israeli army, army is, a, is a powerful military, there is a point at which its prowess cannot save them. Only the God of the scriptures will be able to guarantee their survival. And that's exactly what happens. I want to read a passage from Jeremiah that speaks 
of what God intends to do with regard to Israel when all their strength is gone. And it looks like the end is inevitable. Their survival is at stake. This is Jeremiah 30. He says, I am with you and will save you, says Yahweh. Though I completely destroy all the nations among which I scatter you, I will not completely destroy you. I will di discipline you, but only in due measure. I will not let you go entirely unpunished. But listen to this. But all who devour you will be devoured. All your enemies will go into exile. Those who plunder you will be plundered. Those who sp make spoil of you, I will despoil. I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares Yahweh, because you, you are called an outcast. Zion, for whom no one cares. And then he speaks of a leader that will emerge from Israel. Their leader will be one of their own. Their ruler will arise from among them. I will bring him near, and he will come close to me. For he who is he, for who is he, who will devote himself to be close to me, declares Yahweh. So you will be my people, and I will be your God. Netanyahu has reminded us that the enemy of your enemy is your enemy. And he's reminded us that after all is said and done, with all the focus upon Israel, God will come to their rescue. Hodulu Yahweh Kitov, Ki Leolam Chasto. Give thanks to Yahweh, for he is good, and his grace endures forever. Hallelujah. Till next week, Od Ki of Oshilo, for unto Messiah comes, Yivarecha Yahweh. God bless you. Yahweh bless you and yours.